right now on 5 on your side at 10. We're already looking ahead to Tuesday for our next severe weather risk. What threats we're expecting on Tuesday, the timing and ingredients that come together to start the week. Their place of worship became the scene of a crash. Tonight, how they're finding hope with faith and fellowship. Ending note. Shot by Gessel, rebound, scores! No playoff hockey again in St. Louis this year. Tonight, how fans and downtown businesses are not singing the blues. Between soccer and the Battle Hawks, uh, there's all kinds of sports in St. Louis. It's actually really exciting. First tonight, a live look downtown where we're rounding out a weekend of near record warmth. Now the weather first team is looking ahead to the threat of severe weather. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. That threat will have us in a weather alert on Tuesday. Meteorologist Gary Frank is preparing us all in tonight's weather first forecast. Yeah, good evening. You don't step outside at any point today, even right now, and think, oh, yeah, it's mid-April. No problem. Uh, it doesn't feel like that at all. It's even a little bit muggy as we look at Chesterfield right now, as temperatures still at this hour in the low 70s, not only here, but throughout the entire region. It's very warm. It's a little muggy. Even as we zoom in locally, it's still 75 in Sullivan, so it's very mild. The storm system out to the west, that's the one that we'll continue to monitor, and it's moving slowly, but as it works its way gradually across Utah and into Denver across the Rockies. It's going to create our next severe weather threat and that arrives for Tuesday. Right now as temperatures still hold on steady in the low 70s, it's a little bit muggy with a calm wind and overnight there is a frontal boundary that drapes across us but doesn't do much. Upper 50s to the north, low 60s to the south. It's still warm, but for the week ahead, warmer conditions remain. We're going to see that severe weather potential specifically on Tuesday, but maybe even a minor one on Monday as well before another cool down is on the way. But we're monitoring those severe weather ingredients for Tuesday. The timing, specific location and types of severe weather all in jeopardy right now, but looks to be later on Tuesday. We'll time that out and talk about some of the scenarios that are in play over the next 36 hours. A man is dead after being hit by a car in Fairview Heights. The crash happened at around 1 this morning near the Metro train station off St. Clair Avenue. Jeremy Gunter of Belleville was taken to the hospital where he later died. According to witnesses, Gunter was trying to cross the street at the time of the crash. Police are still investigating. Tonight, police are investigating a serious crash on I-44 in downtown St. Louis. That crash shut down the eastbound lanes of the depressed section near the arch for a couple of hours. It involved a car and a motorcycle. At least two people were hurt and taken to the hospital. And right now, we don't know their conditions, but we will keep you up to date as soon as we learn more. We're learning new details tonight about the driver who crashed a pickup truck into a church in St. Charles. New tonight, our Annie Crawl has reaction from church members who still gathered today less than 24 hours after their place of worship was heavily damaged. Annie. Police say it was a 16 year old boy driving the yellow pickup truck who crashed through a wall of the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Church yesterday afternoon. No one was inside, thankfully, at the time. Today's Sunday service looked very different than any other week. Rebuilding. The best word to describe where the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Chapel and community is at on a Sunday morning after having a bright yellow pickup truck drive through their sanctuary just one day before. We just want everybody to know that we're here and we're not going to be knocked down just because our building's been knocked down. The church hosted a Sunday morning Zoom service with three other congregations. We sh reassure each other that we are together. Afterwards, members met up at the Painted Sky Coffee Shop in St. Charles for fellowship and to reflect after seeing the devastation for themselves. Some of them who were in the church the night before the crash feel very lucky. It was right in that spot the next day where that truck ended up landing, literally right where we were, which was shocking and weird. This is not the first time that we have shifted buildings. It is not the first time that we have lost a building. The only injury was the 16-year-old driver. He was taken to St. Louis Children's Hospital and has since been released. St. Charles City Police say the cause of the crash is still under investigation as church members once again ask. How do we rebuild from this? We are a, we are a scrappy congregation, so we do, um, we, we do know that we'll recover, um, and we need to just figure out what the next steps are. 
The church is expected to continue cleanup and potentially move their gatherings to a different location as the weeks progress. If you're interested in supporting them as they continue to rebuild, you can find a link to their donation page in the As Seen on TV section at KSTK.com. Mike? Annie, thanks. Well, it was a big day for St. Louis sports with all four of our major teams in action. The Blues and City SC at home, Cardinals and Battlehawks, they were on the road. The blue season came to another disappointing end with the note missing out on the playoffs for the second straight year. That can't be good news for fans and businesses near Enterprise Center, but our Laura Barcheski talked with some of those folks today. Laura? Mike, Blues fans and businesses, we're absolutely bummed that we won't be going to the playoffs this year, but they say there's still so much more to be excited about in the St. Louis sports world that will fill the gap. St. Louis Blues fans filled Enterprise Center for the last home game of the season. They played pretty good, um, three good periods, so could have, could have saw some more goals, but we got an empty netter. We didn't make it to overtime, that's awesome. Even though they're heading home with a win, fans are bummed they won't be seeing summer playoff hockey. It's bittersweet, it's bittersweet. Uh, you know, I love coming out of a Blues game and enjoying the warmth, but again, we'll just come back stronger next year. And while the businesses like Schlafly are bummed too, it's not something they have to rely on anymore as seasons ramp up for the other big players in town. Between soccer and the Battle Hawks, uh, there's all kinds of sports in St. Louis. It's actually really exciting. Schlafly events manager John Ellifrost says they get people into the tap room before and after games for all four major sports teams and are thriving, especially on City ST game days. It's a mutual relationship. It really is because the fans come to support the team. Uh, we support them as well. The fans come here and and uh, hang out and, uh, and have a blast before the game and Everybody has a good time and it's a win win for everybody. Even fans can see how much the addition of a football and soccer team has made on downtown. Every team we have here in town has a big support and um, it's just great to see a new team come to this city and get the exact same support. The St. Louis Cardinals are also back in action, but saw some lower than normal attendance numbers for Tuesday's night game. St. Louis sports fans say there's still time. We have the best fan base in America, in my opinion, and uh, I think we're going to keep it going. The good news is we got three out of four wins. Unfortunately, the Cardinals lost to the Diamondbacks, but there's still a lot more to all of these seasons, and it was a pretty great day for St. Louis sports. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. Business is booming for a little hole in the wall shop in Hazelwood. Well, things were sluggish just a few days ago for JoJo's Old Fashioned Diner. Another business stepped up and served the owner some kindness. Bob Manneke, owner of Man Meats in Florissant, was stopping at local shops around town collecting donations for a charity auction. That's when he happened upon JoJo's, door wide open, not a customer to be seen. After talking with the diner's owner, Sean Bonin, Manneke snapped a photo of the menu and took to Facebook. Within half an hour, comments came flooding in and the people followed. Sean, I'm like, is it really going to work? I said, get ready. And he sold by 12, by 12 30 that day. I was getting texts from our customers saying, hey, they're sold out. They turned the clothesline on. I was like, are you kidding me? I come out here to place it packed like this, parking lot full. I went back in the kitchen. His grill's filled with food. He turned on me and he's like, Bob, what have you done to me? I was like, sorry, not sorry. Several customers said today they were unsure if they were even going to make it in today. The line was long. If you'd like a taste for yourself, JoJo's Diner on Howder Shell is open every day from 7 30 a.m to 2 p.m. unless, of course, they're sold out. Send in the clown. A retired high school baseball coach is turning his heartache into joy. What does that do to your heart? Oh, it fills it up. Probably one of the best feelings you can have. How he's still making a difference for children in his second act. Temperatures warming up in the upper 80s. It was our warmest day in almost 200 days. How warm we get tomorrow and when things break with our next chance for rain as we track that here coming up.